I said in the, one of the previous sermons that one of the problems besetting the church today, one of the reasons why our evangelism is becoming less appealing and less effective, it is because of our shallow understanding of salvation and its power. We have a shallow understanding of salvation. Even the gospel we are preaching, it is a little bit diluted. A lot of people don't fully understand the gospel or the salvation that we preach. That causes that we need to study deeper, to study more in the scriptures about the realities of salvation. And one of the manifestations that our understanding of salvation is a bit shallow, we need to grow in that one, is the fact that we count those that have been saved by looking at those who raised up their, their hands and made a confession after the preacher in a crusade somewhere or in a marketplace. Salvation, if only we knew better, salvation transcends raising up your hand to receive Jesus at the crusade. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I always do the same. But we need to realize that salvation is bigger than a formula. Salvation is not a preacher's formula. It is not the church's formula. Salvation is a divine activity. It is God who causes all the factors there for somebody to be saved. By the way, the Savior is God himself. And one other thing that reveals that our understanding of salvation is a little bit shallow. It is the term soul winning. It is a beautiful term. I like it. I preach about it. I use that same term. But we need to grow beyond that understanding. Yeah, the term soul winning is an exciting term. We mobilize people into soul winning, which is okay. But our understanding has got to grow to advance beyond that. We should be able to answer the question. Who is the real soul winner? Is it the preacher? Is it the believer? Is it the prophet, the bishop, the apostle, the pastor? Because I know people who take credit to say, I have won thousands of souls. Oh, so and so preacher has won such a huge number of, uh, of souls. And we give ourselves certain titles to say, I am a soul winner. Or we are soul winners. Well, that is a sign that our understanding of salvation lacks depth. Just as a reminder, recently I preached on John chapter 3 when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus to say you must be born again. And Nicodemus was confused and said, how can a man be born again after when he is old? How can a man be born? Because the understanding is like an already existing person does not get born. The only ones who get born are those who never existed. So the question of Nicodemus was legitimate, all right? And in the previous sermon, I said that in salvation, it is possible to be born again when you already exist. That's why salvation involves instantaneous death and resurrection. There is an in, in, in instantaneous creation from the old self, and the old self disappears, and a new creature is born. Now, here is a fact. Nobody gives birth to himself or herself. There must be another entity that puts together all those ingredients and factors for somebody to be born. Because nobody gives birth to himself or herself. So that tells us that salvation is a divine activity. Because Jesus told Nicodemus to say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit Capital letters S, spirit, is the spirit, small letter S, right? And that's, capital letter spirit, is S is of a spirit, that's the spirit of God. So salvation, we need to begin to appreciate the fact that salvation has got, to, has got more to do with the divine activity than the preachers or the church's efforts. The more we realize that, the more we will depend upon God other than depending upon just our efforts. It's good to put in the best of our efforts and preparations to pray for the, the people to be saved. But ultimately, we need to look up to God to say, God, we can do the preaching. We can do all the things. But it is only you who is the genuine soul winner. This reminds me of the words of Jesus. Stunning words. Please come with me to John chapter 6. And we're going to read two verses. Verse 37 and verse number 44. On face number 37, Jesus said, 
all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Verse number 44, which is stronger than verse number 37. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Did you hear that? This is Jesus. No one can come to Jesus. No one can get saved unless the Father is involved. And his involvement is that the Father does the drawing. Right? He draws us to begin to see Christ. To fall in love with the Savior. It is the Father's activity. That's why I keep saying that salvation has got more to do with the divine activity than it is to do with our human efforts. Not only that, Jesus said again on John chapter 12, on verse number 32, he prophesied to say, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. So the Father draws you towards Christ. And Christ himself as well, on John 12, verse 32, he says, I will draw all people to myself. So salvation is good. It's, good. it's a divine activity. We only respond to God through faith. But we are saved by grace. There is a drawing of grace. There is a drawing of the Father. There is a drawing of Christ that causes us to believe in the gospel and be saved. That's why salvation transcends raising up your hand at the crusade. It transcends the preaching of the gospel. More than that, salvation, the real soul winner, it is not me. It is not you. It is not any preacher or any bishop, any prophet. Praise God for the soul winning efforts. But ultimately, the real soul winner is Christ himself who draws all people to himself. The real soul winner is the one who was crucified on the cross. Because he said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw. If Jesus does not draw people, nobody else can. No preacher can. No prophet can. No apostle can. No pastor, no evangelist can. The more we realize that salvation is a divine activity, the more we will depend on God in our prayers, in our preaching efforts, in our evangelism, and we are going to see results because Christ cannot fail to draw people to himself. The mistake we are doing is that we are trying to draw the people with our artificial efforts. Yes, the efforts have got to be there. The passion has got to be there. The prayer, the mobilization has got to be there. But deep down in our hearts, in the spirit, we must be humble enough to concede that the real soul winner. Look at that word, soul. No human being can win a soul unless Christ draws those people to himself. So the real winner, the real soul winner is Christ himself. So next time, you are preparing for a crusade or for any form of evangelism or my fellow preachers. The next time you stand on a pulpit to preach, point people to Christ. Put your trust. Let us put all our trust. After praying and fasting, after studying the scriptures and preparing everything, our ultimate effort or trust must be to depend upon God. Because unless Christ draws them, nobody else can. The real soul winner is Christ. Stay blessed.